back to Bagel Tech Missy here on the Bagel Tech Network. You guessed it, my name is Missy and I am your go-to girl for all things tech related. If you've got questions, I've got answers. Um, before we get started, I just want to read a couple reviews. You guys are the best. You've been downloading my podcasts, um, downloading the, the video as well, but the best part of all, better than even chocolate, is that you've been leaving great, great messages for me, great reviews on iTunes, and I wanted to share some of them with you. Um, I have one here from someone called Donkey Bob. Do I even need to read further? His name is Donkey Bob. How much better could it get? Okay, it gets better. Um, as I write this, I have no idea how I've survived for so long without Missy. Um, she deals with the issues that other people just gloss over and forget. Proper advice from a worldly woman who knows. Oh, he called me a worldly woman. I've never been called a worldly woman. I'm going to take it. Um, oh, and then he puts, I'm in love. Donkey Bob, you're so cute. I'm in love right back. Thank you for giving me five stars and reviewing um, my podcast. You are so precious. Let's see the next one, shall we? Um... Missy is a mystic. This is by David Walker. Why has Missy been kept a secret for so long? She is full of great tips and she is a real professional photographer. Knuckles, you know it. Um, looking forward to all the photographic and tech advice that will be given in the following weeks. It's like she can see into the future with all the common sense advice which makes you think, why didn't I think of that? Another great podcast from Bagel Tech Network. Knuckles to Missy. And then he put two X's, which everyone knows are hugs. So David Walker, I'm just giving you two hugs right back. Thank you so much. Um, anybody else? Oh my gosh, we've got one here from Carl. Missy, the professional tech expert, is a treasure. You guys, you're going to make me cry. Oh my gosh. Looking forward to all of the tips and tech answers you're going to be supplying me with over the coming shows. Rest assured, I have already purchased a large quantity of rubber gloves. Oh, to deal with all those pesky viruses. Carl, I just think that's, that's the best thing. I'm not saying you're ever going to get a virus. Because odds are in your favor that you won't. But it's just good to have them on hand. You feel me? Having a box of 100 Costco rubber gloves is kind of one of those ways to assure that you're never going to need them. Am I right? You know I'm right. Um, and we've got one more. This is from Erin. Erin, welcome to the, well, Erin says, welcome to the Bagel Tech Network, Missy. This is brilliant and long. May it continue. Remember, P, it's for professional. Darn straight, P is for professional. When in doubt with your camera, you just turn that dial to P. Stands for professional. Let the camera think for you. Gosh, we put so much into worrying over reading manuals and learning exposures. That's so silly. So thank you guys, all of you, for the wonderful comments and really for making me feel right at home here on the Bagel Tech Network. Shall we get started? Let's. Okay, let me move all my little windows around here. I'm so bad at this. Gosh. <coughs> and excuse me, I have been under the weather. Is there a British term for that? Or is under the weather the British term? You know, I really think that I should have been born British. You know, I'm not, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not blaming any of my ancestors, but I just really feel I should have been born British. You know, I want to say things like, that's pants. Or, you know, workarounds. I want to say, fancy a chat? I want to say things like that, and I can't because I'm not British. You know, it doesn't stop Madonna, but I'm, yeah, 
I'm not Madonna, but then who is? Um, anyway, I mentioned that to a dear friend who said, listen, <laughs> you could have been British, but you all kicked us out. And I just want to go on record saying I had nothing to do with that. Okay? All right, let's move on to the questions. Um, dear Missy, um, since I'm an all-available light photographer, what should I do when it rains or is very cloudy or windy? Is it okay since I am a lifestyle photographer and bad weather is part of life? You know, I think this is one of those questions that as you're typing it or asking it, I think you kind of answer it for yourself. Do you ever do that? Do you ever ask a question and as the words leave your mouth, do you think, gosh, that's silly. I already know the answer. The answer is if you are a natural light photographer, if you shoot with available light, then you shoot with available light. It doesn't really matter what the light is. Um, now, the best light to shoot with um, for shooting on location, especially when you're a natural light photographer, is as much natural light as possible, right? Um, I always say the golden hour, which is between 12 and 2, because we have all that bright, shiny, golden, beautiful sun. I mean, if a little sun is good, a lot is better. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Now, if it's rainy or foggy, that's the light that's available. And so that's the light you need to use. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer. People ask me, what do I do if it's dark and there's no light? Well, hello, if it's dark, that means you just simply can't shoot. And you'll just have to wait till the following day um, when it's bright and sunny again. Okay, so remember, whatever light's available, you use it. Okay, next question. Um, Dear Missy, my husband loves his technology. Hmm. And this year bought me a Kindle as a Christmas present. Well, that was nice. A Kindle. Of course, I looked surprised and pleased when I opened it, as any good wife should. But I have to admit, I'm a little lost. He assumes that I knew what it was and how to use it, and I didn't like to look silly. Well, who does? But now that a few weeks have passed, bringing up the subject and conversation has been impossible for me. Please, can you help? Untucky of Virginia. Well, Untucky, don't feel bad. I really wasn't sure what a Kindle was either. Um, so what I did is I Googled it. And I found out that it's a little device, which you know, that's made out of plastic. It kind of looks like a really big phone. And you put books in it. And I'm not really sure how you put the books in it. Um, I think you might just like open the book and then turn it so that the screen faces the book. And I think there might be some kind of scanning device. You know, kind of like, um, oh, um, gosh, like um, a copy machine. And then it scans it into the Kindle. And then the great thing about the Kindle is then you can read that book or pages um, anywhere, on an airplane or um, in the kitchen or in your car, which is kind of nice. Um, now, what I would do is check and see if there's some kind of user manual because unlike professional DSLR cameras, I don't think Kindle comes with a P option. Um, but what you can always do is take it back into the bookstore and ask them um, to show you how to use the scanning mechanism. And then that way you'll be set and your husband never has to know. We girls have to stick together. Am I right? You know I'm right. Okay, let's continue on. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> this silly cough. If I was in London right now, I'd be drinking some hot tea. But I'm not. Kind of makes me sad. Someone needs to give me some London or British get-betters quick. Okay, let's see. 
Dear Missy, my devilishly handsome great nephew, who is 28 and a very clever, cool, and fashionable man, is typing this for me. Wasn't that sweet? And I suggested I get something called an apple. Having looked in the shops, I have discovered that they are very expensive and well beyond my limited finances as a pensioner. Pensioner. Hmm, that's another one for Google. Therefore, my question to you is, what should I sell to be able to afford an Apple computer? Or should I go for an apricot or a blackberry? I haven't seen either of these, but my great nephew insists they exist. Best wishes, Betty McDonald's, Berwick-upon-Tweed, England. Dang it, I want to live in a place called Berwick-upon-Tweed. Okay, back to the question. Um, Betty McDonald's. Apples are computers. Um, they also go by the name of Macintosh. And they're wonderful. You know, when I had to choose between getting um, an Apple or a PC, I ended up going with an Apple. And it was kind of along, my reasoning was kind of um, along the same as yours. I like fruit. Let's face it. I love fruit, and apples are one of my favorites, and you can't eat a PC, hmm. So I thought if someone is clever enough to name their computer Apple, not only must it be fun, but it must be kind of good for you. Um, now I don't know that there's any other fruit computers. Um, there is something called a Blackberry. And I'm trying to remember, I saw someone once in the subway and I asked them what it was and they told me it was a Blackberry and I thought they were just, they were just goofing me. Um, but I think it's like a little, a little portable device, kind of like a phone, I think. Um, but you can check on that Blackberry thing because that might be less expensive than the big Apple computer. Um, and just save up for it. You know, there's no need to go into debt over a computer, of all things. Just check out the BlackBerry. I think you might be surprised, and I think, hmm, judging by the size, they're probably, they're probably um, a lot less expensive than an Apple. Um, now, speaking of size, it takes us to our very last question. <clears throat> and it's a good thing, because... Boy, does Missy need a cough drop. Um, Dear Missy, I love the show and wondered if you could help me. I'm looking to treat myself to a tablet computer. Lots of computer questions this week. I've been using my boyfriend's three and a half inch iPod Touch, and I must say, it has left me very unsatisfied recently. Hmm. I've heard there are much bigger seven or even 10 inch ones out there. Wow, those are big. My question is, do you think that size matters when it comes to these things? Intrigued of Essex. That's a wonderful question. We live in a world today where bigger is better. I mean, you go into Costco and look at their TVs, they're all ginormous. There are these huge TVs, and then right next to them are these teeny tiny little, um, you know, phones and, and electrical gadgets. I think that gone are the days of bigger is better, because I'm going to tell you something. It really doesn't matter the size of the device you're considering. It's what it can do for you. I've had some giant, giant devices that have left me so disappointed I wanted to cry. And then I've had some tiny little ones that I thought, really, what's that going to do? Hello! They packed a punch, let me tell you. I mean, I told all my friends about them. I was so excited. So really, don't judge things on their size. It's really not the size, but what it can do for you and how it makes you feel when you use it. That counts. Am I right? You know I'm right. 
Well guys, it looks like by the old uh, clock on the Mac that it's time to finish for today. Before I close, I just really want to send out a huge, big, giant, missy thank you to UK2.net for providing our bandwidth. Now, I don't really know what bandwidth is, but I know that it's something that we need to get me to you. And for that, I am so thankful for those boys at UK2.net and the girls. If I could see them, I would just bake them a big batch of cookies. So please, if you have a minute, tell them thank you. If it wasn't for them, we could never spend this time together. They're pretty precious, aren't they? So again, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you learned a little something. As always, I welcome all of your questions about anything. Tech, life, you name it. Send all your questions to bageltechmissy at gmail.com. And until next week, I send you lots of tech kisses and love. Bye!